Here are a couple answers to a couple stupid questions from white guys. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why do you think every cis white male is born racist? Racism is a learned behavior. To me, I think out of all of these questions, and this is quite an achievement, that was by far the dumbest question. Which is amazing, because there's quite a few dumb questions in there. Are you aware that white men are not born racist? It, it's a learned behavior. Yeah. What the fuck are you supposed to say to that? What world does Mr. Repsion live in? where he thinks that reasonable people are making the argument that white people are born racist, like they come out of the vagina and then the doctor's black, and they're like, Fuck you, doctor! Nigga! Like, who is uh, making that argument that has any sway in the feminist movement? That is not a narrative that I have seen. To you guys, it's just feminists are by definition racists and, like, hate white people and... But it's like you don't even think critically about it. You just say, how is it fair to say, and then ridiculous question that doesn't make any fucking sense. And I think you should be embarrassed that you ask such a stupid question. And how can you give a good answer to a question that is so fucking stupid? Mr. Ripsion, it's evident that you, you don't fucking care about anything that they think at all. If you want to ask questions of SJWs, try to ask better questions, not fucking stupid questions that just make us think the question asker is ignorant and stupid. It doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. How can you possibly say that the phrase all lives matter is somehow racist? It sounds like something the Dalai Lama would say. I realize that you're making a little bit of a joke here at the end, but it is a legitimate question and a thought process that some people go through upon hearing the phrase black lives matter. Black lives matter? Well, of course black lives matter. All lives matter. Well, one of the ways that people deal with something that makes them uncomfortable, they make a joke out of it. It makes it easier. It makes it easier to talk about. It makes it easier to listen to. And it makes it easier to dismiss. So you don't actually have to deal with whatever it was that made you uncomfortable in the first place. So completely taken out of context, the phrase all lives matter is not racist. It's true. Everybody matters. All lives matter. Everybody has value. All lives matter. And it probably is something that somebody like the Dalai Lama would say. However, it is racist when you use it as a response to Black Lives Matter. It's a form of racism called colorblindness. When someone says Black Lives Matter, they are not saying that black lives are more important than, or that other lives are less than. What they are saying is that their lives are being devalued based on the color of their skin. Their lives are being seen as worth less because of the color of their skin. You dismiss the importance of the death simply because of the color of their skin. It's expected of people with their skin color. That is racism and extremely insensitive. So when people get mad at you and angry and frustrated because that's how you're dealing with it, you are making a joke out of it. You are ignoring the issue that they are trying to get across. They are trying to have a conversation. They are trying to make a change. They are trying to make their lives better. And if you can't relate to them, if you can't, if you still literally cannot understand why it is an issue and why they are saying it, look into a woman by the name of Jane Elliott. Watch her experiments and try and put yourself in that scenario. What would it be like to be those people? What would it be like to have that happen to you? What would it be like to be on the receiving end of racism? All lives matter has almost exclusively been used to repudiate any discussion or protest from Black Lives Matter. Despite the egalitarian wording, deflecting discussion of the very real problems that the black communities in the US face means this is the hashtag of choice for racists, denialists and other assholes. If and when hashtag all lives matter 
starts broadly supporting Black Lives Matter, then it may be considered less racist. Would you rather be right or popular? It seems like your primary objective is to score social points and get public validation. Now, far be it for me to uh, make an appeal to popularity. But they Brother TJ, take it away. I gained 38,000 subscribers in the last 30 days. You lost 79. While I'm rocketing towards a million subs, you're slowly counting back down to fucking zero. And by the way, even though I have uh, all of these fucking subscribers and all these fans and my fucking channel metrics are good. You speak publicly in the same way that people write their dating profiles. Stop trying to demonstrate how awesome you are and get real. My first answer to this is not on the substance really, it's just the question asker. So this guy's Devin Tracy or Atheism is Unstoppable. And I find it ironic that out of all of the people who could have asked this question, it was him. Because something that Devin Tracy always does is go on and on about how many subs he has and like how popular he is. And there is a fucking, there's a culture on YouTube of um, people seeing subs as some kind of measure of worth. But to be perfectly honest, I don't care how many subs any of these guys have, their views are still pretty fucking dumb quite a lot of the time. I recently got into a Twitter exchange with Sargon Vicard. He was going to make a video about the criminality of black people, and I knew straight away, ah oh, fuck, this is going to be just a cavalcade of ignorance and, you know, straw man and false equivalencies. And he's just going to repeat what the fucking cop in the conversation said, which was, they're more prone to criminality because 70 blah blah percent of black people, you know, commit more crime than whites. More crime than whites, more criminality, more criminality. Mark Lamont Hill in that conversation, you know, he was trying to actually, like, think about this. Whereas the cop guy was like, criminality, statistics, criminality, statistics. And Sargon's like, I'm going to cover this. Look at the statistics. Look at the crime. Look at the crime. Crime, statistics. They don't think hard about this. Crime, statistics, crime, statistics, crime. Like they're a fucking parrot. I tweeted out to Sargon, Oh no, is a whole bunch of ignorance incoming? Sargon just quoted this, and then said, You won't be featured in the video. Seventeen retweets, two hundred and forty-two likes. Now, to me, this is just like a fucking bog-standard stupid insult. But when a cunt like Sargon says that he gets two hundred and forty-two likes, and then it's message after message, you sound shit at comebacks. It seems to me like you're the expert, Mark. Two shots fired, you loser. Oh, you got owned. You got wrecked. You got destroyed. You blah blah blah. And as far as I'm concerned. I just thought, wow, these people are fucking drones. They don't think for themselves. Nobody thought to ask, like, why do you think it might be ignorant? You know, they're just like, no, you attack Sargon and then he burns you. I'm going to go support Sargon. Later, this asshole says, well, you're already here, so I guess so. Like, oh, the ignorance is incoming. <laughs> My tweet got quoted by Sargon, so heaps of people saw it. I only got three likes. This is a massive herd mentality going on around here. Oh, basically the same joke. This dickhead only got five likes. So I said, well, you don't have an army of sycophants to like your zinger. Well, that's pretty sad. <coughs> One day, I will get to have heaps of jerk-off fans who just agree with everything I think, and then whenever I tweet out anything, they'll just be like, oh, I did a fart. 5,000 <laughs> likes. Sargon can say any generic stupid thing, and his fans will just suck him off. And AIU, he only cares about how much his fans like him. That's what these fucking people care about. The more our fans suck us off, the more correct we are. So it's really ironic. These people that always talk about subs, they always talk about likes, they always talk about how many of their dickhead fans are basically just, Ooh, I like that. Sargon said it. I like it. I like it. I'm not even going to think. These are the people lecturing about popularity, and it's not popular to make feminist videos generally, unless you're like a shitty MTV feminist like Lacey Green. I'm not really a fan of. But she just makes like poppy, trendy shit. Or if you're like Anita Sarkeesian, because I don't know. For some reason, she's popular. But it's the Patreon money, the subscribers, the likes, the sycophants, the jerk offs, the circle jerks. That is all an anti feminism.
and fuck, if I converted tomorrow to being an anti-feminist, I'm sure I could get way more subs. It's not like it's easier to be a feminist or SJW, which I don't even think is a valid term, a YouTuber. It's not. So, get fucked. And do you think interrupting speakers and staging protests and having, like, a fuckload of hate against you is how you get popularity? I think you need to re-examine things, you know, just because you have this rabid hate for SJWs and feminists doesn't mean that this is a valid question. And Devin Tracy? An arrogant, fucking, self-involved, poncy fuckface asking this question is too much irony. So if a drunk man sleeps with a drunk woman, the woman is incapable of giving consent, but the man is? Our question 15, one of the most revealing questions. So if a drunk man sleeps with a drunk woman, the woman is incapable of giving consent, but the man is? Now, remember the first question where they were concerned about LGBT people and ethnic minorities and women getting harassed by SJWs when they agree, disagree with them? Well, I'm sure that you're going to use the same logic for when I answer this question as a bipolar, bisexual, biracial person. So here it goes. It does not matter what gender you are, what your sexual orientation is. If you are incapable of giving consent via, you know, being highly intoxicated, you know, because anybody who has lived in the world knows what a blackout drunk looks like or knows what when somebody is very drunk that they can't make decisions, right? Right? So if you can't do that, or you've taken too many drugs, or you have been drugged because, you know, that happens too. Regardless of your gender, regardless of your sexual orientation, it is a lack of consent, which makes it rape or sexual assault or both. And when I bring up the LGBTQ thing, this shows me that you do not care about men who rape men. You don't care about women who rape women. You don't care about women who rape men, really. You don't care about uh, trans uh, men or women and the amount of sexual assault that they experience. You don't really care because you wouldn't have asked that question if you actually really thought about it. No. Consent. Isn't that difficult a proposition? If a female is lying, lying semi-unconscious and being fucked by a male, yes, it's rape. If a male is lying semi-unconscious and being straddled by a female, then yes, it's also rape. If both are active and variously participating and communicating their consent in various ways, then, to the degree one or the other is drunk, then they're both in danger doing something sexual that the other can't or isn't consenting to, and should both acknowledge that that behaviour is irresponsible and possibly harmful. But the real problem we're talking about here is that many rapists and sexual abusers misuse alcohol as a way of incapacitating their victims, and subsequently they're protected by a culture that denies consent is important, and that denies that being drunk means you can't consent. Another point worth noting here is that SJWs, in this case feminists, have been discussing, advocating for, and even legislating for the definition of rape including forced to penetrate. That's because feminists understand consent, and yes, feminists, and feminists want equality. Consent applies to both genders. Consent is one of the most essential principles, obviously, when it comes to sexual matters, but also when it comes to human rights and dignity as a whole. To be honest, I get disturbed by the way it's often treated in anti-fem circles, as if it's an obstacle that they are looking for a way to get around, or an unfair burden on dudes looking for a little something something like they do, you know. I, I don't know what it's about. Is it really easier to spend your life attempting to pacify the world and subdue all around you, instead of accepting that you are the person who has to change? Let me 
bring up a quote that I honestly should know by heart, but maybe you'll recognize it. I hope you do. And even if you don't, at least think of the implications. Doesn't matter what the press says. Doesn't matter what the politicians or the mob say. Doesn't matter if the whole country decides that something wrong is something right. This nation was founded on one principle above all else, the requirement that we stand up for what we believe, no matter the odds or the consequences. When the mob and the press and the whole world tell you to move, your job is to plant yourself like a tree beneath, beside the river of truth and tell the world, no, you move. Pacify and subdue the world? Oh, darling, you have a special way of turning your rationalizations around on other people. Okay, look, easy has nothing to do with it. You just do the right thing. That's it. It might work, it might not. You just do the best you can and yeah, that's the whole plan. Not world domination, not some Hollywood movie heroism, just do the right thing. You should try it sometime. When I'm singing along with rap music, is it okay if I say the word nigga? If you're really concerned about it, go for it, dude. Just do it. And while you do it, you know, just close all the windows and get permission from your one black friend that you say you have. Pistol point cock, ready to link shots nonstop until I see your monkey ass drop. And let your homies know who done it. Cause when it comes to this gangster shit, you motherfuckers know who run it. We standing up for our own shit. And if you want this motherfucker, you gotta realize something, nigga. You fucking with the very thing. I got this killer up inside of me. I can't talk to my mother, so I talk to my diary.